Inside the Triangle, the Decker Truck Line Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside the Triangle. I am your host, Darren Ladley, and today, this week, we are celebrating our Driver Manager Appreciation Week. So I brought in the head man himself, the one, the only. What is your name? Oh, Michael Errett. That's oh, yeah. his name again. It's getting pretty deep already. We're just getting started. <laughs> so Michael wanted to praise his DMs because basically he is the boss of all the DMs uh, company-wide. Um, and so Michael's got kind of a list of everyday duties that they do. And he just wanted to kind of talk to him, let everybody know exactly what a DM goes through every day and just show them what kind of issues they have to deal with. So Michael, what do you got there? Yeah, so we... We celebrate Truck Driver Appreciation Week every year, so we thought this year we'd be nice to do a, a Fleet Manager Appreciation Week just to uh, let them know how much we um, appreciate everything they do. You know, we we think they got probably the second hardest job in the industry. The drivers obviously are first, but the fleet managers, the dispatchers, got to deal with all that stuff out on the road. So we want to we want to thank them and appreciate everything that they do because uh, their work is is very difficult and um, just. Just not too long ago, we updated the list of duties that that our fleet managers are responsible for, and uh, we come up with 31 things that they are are to manage and, and look after on a driver's week or, or every day. But I mean, well, I won't go through every single one of them, but you know, they they touch a lot of a lot of details in a driver's life, whether it be their load information. I mean, that's obvious. They got to get the information out to the driver when it's supposed to pick up, when it's supposed to deliver. All the details on the load. If it's refrigerated load, they got to know the temp. Um, flatbed load. It, you know, it, what kind of securement does it need? Does it need to be tarped, or, or can it be an untarped load? Uh, all, all that specific information. Um, they need to track the drivers to make sure they're picking up and delivering on time. You know, that's the main focus of of our drivers picking up and delivering customer loads when when they're supposed to be. You know, that's the only thing we got to sell is our service. So we need to make sure we're doing that. Um, to the best of our ability, as long as the driver's got hours and, and mother nature and the, and the trucks hold together, we, we should be delivering when we're supposed to. Making sure the driver's miles are there. You know, we have a, a goal for each driver when they come on at expectation sheet, how many miles they expect every week. So, so we, we measure our fleet managers based on the drivers, their drivers getting their goals for that week. And, and, uh, so we hold them accountable for that. Um, getting the drivers home when they're supposed to be home. You know, that's, that's huge for a driver. They they spend their weeks on the road, and when they want to be home, that's the fleet manager's responsibility to to get them home when they when they want to be there, not the day after or two days after. But if they want home on Friday, we need to make sure that they get them there. And the one thing that we do a lot of is, I mean, we have guys that are home every weekend. We have guys that are home every day. We have guys that stay out a month at a time. So it's kind of a a real. Uh, uh, coup de tay, I guess, of what a DM may have to deal with. He's got 30, 40 drivers on, but every one probably has a different home time in this situation. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're mixed on the boards. I mean, we try and keep, um, the home weekly guys on certain boards or the guys that want to be out two, three weeks at a time, keep them on certain boards so that you can kind of manage that. But we have, you know, measures in the system so you can put in uh, the driver's home time request. So they know, everybody knows when they look at McLeod, uh, when that driver needs to be home. So yeah, they're they're kind of the middleman. They got they got the customers making sure pulling on them, making sure their freight's delivered on time. They got the shop begging on them to get trucks in for services. They need to get their A's and B services done on time. They got the safety side pulling on them to make sure drivers are in for their physicals or their randoms and all that stuff is is updated. Um, we we utilize our fleet manager to help coach um, any safety issues going on. Speed gauge, uh, smart drive. Uh, all that coaching is is done on the safety side, but but the the fleet managers help reinforce that as well. So they they're involved with that. I mean, they do everything from financial help to um, marriage counseling to to anything that goes on in a driver's life. I mean, that's the driver's main point of contact. Well, and I know like right now, I just saw the email come out today for quarterly safety training. So it's their responsibility to make sure all their drivers get their quarterly safety training done because we got to get it done. So yep. they're they're always after them. Hey, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. Scorecard. You know, every month I know we want the reviews on the scorecard also. So that's an important uh, part that they have also. Yeah, we, we have them coach the scorecard after it comes out every month just to try and encourage drivers to, to do better on scorecard or let a driver know where he's where he's failing or where we failed him. I mean, it's not 
every time it's not the driver's fault. Sometimes it happens. It's trucking that we, we don't get them what they need, but, um, but at least they're on the same page and they, they understand that. So, so with the shop, you know, you were talking about coordinating with the shop on services and that, um, cause we do services at so many different terminals. Sometimes we have to do them out on the road, but, um, for any kind of issue breakdown, I mean, they've really got to work with the shop close on that, don't they? Yeah. So anything out on the road, they deal with maintenance support on, um, but anything internal, um, We've recently implemented a, a shop scheduler, so they can go in and actually schedule their shop or their truck in for a A or B service. Um, so that definitely helps. But there's still the the unannounced arrivals of hey, this guy's coming through, and needs this fixed, or a driver just showed up to get fuel, and all of a sudden now he found out he's got a bad tire or something. But so yeah, dealing with um, the shop internally on, on a daily basis is key as well. Well, and you mentioned marriage counselor or family counselor. I mean, we have a, unfortunately deaths in the family, yep. accidents in the family. Um, I know we go over the top trying to make sure we can get guys home if something like that happens. I know we have uh, one of the uh, quotes from one of our drivers, Dennis Watterson, you know, he was very, was very appreciative of how we went over the top to help him when his son passed away. Yeah. So they, they deal with a lot and they, and you know, you and I both dispatched back in the day, you build that relationship with the guys and, and you, they're not, they're more than a truck number. They're a, they're a coworker, they're friends. Um, you know, back when we could do stuff after work, there's, you know, we spent a lot of time with some drivers ha- having a drink or having a meal or, or whatever. I know one of the, one of the dispatchers just got married and I think a couple drivers, his driver showed up at his wedding. So, I mean, that shows you how the relationship building goes with, with the guys and the gals out, out there. So, and you know, we're, we're kind of spoiled or I'm kind of proud of the crew of fleet managers we have. I mean, we've, we've got some guys that have been here a long time. Gary Northrop has been here since Moby Dick was a minnow, you know, and <laughs> he, uh, you know, and he's not the only one. I mean, Marsha and, and the crew out in, out in Missoula, Allen's been here forever. Uh, a lot of those guys have, you know, some driving experience as well. So that helps from when you're talking to a driver that, that, that you have experience out there on the road, they, they, it tends to, sit a little better with them when you're when you're asking them to, to do something so how but, many dms do we have total between the all the terminals um come on michael i'm putting you on the spot yeah here. thanks <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm gonna say 17 to 20 okay. without without knowing exact 22 22 22 oh you cheated you looked so this up ahead of time didn't you katie there's 22 okay <laughs> i could name them all off if you wanted me to but yeah so i mean we got we got men, women. We got some young ones, some old ones. Um, it, it's it's quite a variety. Um, you know, some like to talk on the phone. Some want to do everything over the Qualcomm. It's it's quite a diverse group. And 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 like I say, I, I'm pretty proud of that group. They they've been here quite a while. Um, I'd stack that group up about with anybody in the industry out there. So it's they're they're a pretty good group. Well, and I, I we got some rising stars, I think. I mean, Zach, which we just did the podcast with last week, uh, Alyssa. I mean, we got some of these younger ones, Mike Litweiler, who's a former driver. Um, I mean, they're, they haven't been in it very long, but they're picking it up very well, and they're very helpful to the drivers. And, the, and it shows by how much the drivers really – I get nothing but praises, especially Alyssa. I mean, I get, her drivers just absolutely love her. Yep, and that – I mean, that just shows the kind of person they are. They, they're – they're eager to learn. Like they didn't have any experience when they come. Um, they've never drove a truck, but they they want to learn. They want to do more. They want to do what's right for the driver. I mean, Jimmy Mitchell down in Bessemer. He's he's a young, up and coming fleet manager. He he's he loves his drivers. Demisha talks to them like their Her mother kids. Or, or sister, you know. But you know, and then, and then the crew out west, and it's just quite the crew. I, I'm 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 very impressed with. And if anybody's lost in the country, just call Gary Northrup, and he can tell you he can where tell you're you. at or where you're going. So, <laughs> Unless he has to look it up on the computer, and then it could be a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, so. Exactly. But yeah, out west, you've got, uh, well, we have uh, a podcast coming up with uh, Crystal here shortly. And I mean, she couldn't praise Drew enough. And you got Alan Henderson, who uh, I think he works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, yep. he's never stops. Yeah, he's 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 on vacation and logging in, checking on his guys. He's on, he logs in every weekend. And, you know, it's it's shows their work ethic and their and their attitude towards making sure everything's done correctly. We're not just sending load information and hoping the guy picks up and delivers his load. He's, they really want to make sure everything works for him. Awesome. They deserve it. I mean, they are, the driver is number one, but for behind the scenes, um, the DMs, they make them do what they do. Yeah, they, they got to they gotta make sure everything's 
moving. I mean, the customer service group and, and the gals that make all the appointments, they, they have to make sure their stuff's done too, but it's up to the driver manager to make sure that um, that, that loan information is delivered and, and the driver knows what's expected of them to pick up and deliver on time. And then to get them home when they need to get home. So it's it's a, it's it's a lot on their plate. Like I say, we we just updated the list. There's 31 things that, that we ask of them to do on a on a daily and weekly basis, and it's um, it's quite a daunting task. I mean, back back when you and I were dispatching, you just you just dispatched them and you got them in for a drug test, got them and in for a drug test. yeah, that was about it. If they were coming through the shop, they got their service done. I mean, it was a whole lot simpler um, back then. But w- we got the technology to to make their job as easy as possible. Um, we got a great IT department that's making dashboards to put all the stuff that we ask them to do all on one dashboard so they don't have to look at a bunch of different reports. And in that way, when we sit down with them to go over their driver's stats, you know, it's all on one one sheet. It's live, up to date. Um, and, and so that should hopefully make their lives easier as well. Well, the technology has changed. I mean, you look at uh, uh, what we use for watching trailer temperatures. Uh, what is it the, on the trip? Orbcom. Orbcom. Um, I mean, we can monitor. We can help them. We're, we're always looking to help them out if they need anything. I know a lot of the drivers, like you said, with or DMs with uh, Gary, uh, if they have issues out on the road and they can't find a place to park or something like that or they're not sure of a location, they got Google Earth pulled up and they're using it to help them. Yeah. Yeah, there's many times I walk by and somebody's got Google Earth pulled up. And, and we're switching from Omnitracks to, to Geotab now. So we're in the middle of, the, of that process. So that will help the drivers as well. That I, I have the system actually installed in my car, so I get to play with it and, and understand what the drivers are dealing with out on the road. So it, it's going to be a much better system. We've we got some bugs to work out of it now, but it'll, it'll be a whole lot better when, once we get this done. And winter weather's coming, so, yes. uh, I mean, we had some bad snow, really, kind of. I saw some pictures from some of our, some of our drivers up in Minnesota and, and uh, South Dakota, and, and it's coming, guys. So, yeah. uh, we got Matthew McConaughey on the job for the weather report. Yep, he's our weather bug. So, um, and the we're, we're always looking out, the DMs, and even night ops are always looking out to, and night ops is part of the DMs. I mean, we need to get a shout-out to them, too, I think, uh, for what they do, um, but... Uh, uh, helping drivers through the what's happening out on the roads and giving them a heads up. Yeah, our night ops crew is right in there with our fleet managers. I mean, they're just an extension of our daytime shift. So they deal with all the crap at night. I mean, it, they don't have the support that we have during the day. So when a driver calls in with an issue, they, they have they have to deal with it. So Awesome. Well, I thank you, Michael. Um, anything you want to add? Words of wisdom from the VP? Yeah, no. As as a fleet manager, I, I thank you for everything you do. Like I say, don't don't take stuff personal, but you guys keep working your butts off and and getting these drivers to where they need to be, and we appreciate everything you do. And we do have some comments we're going to have on after this from some of the DMs drivers, and please pay attention and listen to them. Thanks. Well, today we got Charles Gann. Charles Gann is a dedicated Midwest reefer driver. Um, he is sitting on our driver council along with a few others, and he wanted to mention some highlights and do some up talking of his dispatcher, which is Zach. So, uh, how long have you been with Zach? Uh, I'm not sure the exact dates. I'm I'm thinking between two, maybe two and a half years. And Charles was our grand champion winner of the driver of the year last year, and Zach was his DM, and we give. One 100% credit to him getting that from Zach, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay. So what does Zach do for you on a daily basis? On a daily basis, Zach, if you would allow me, I'd like to back up a little bit. When uh, when I first moved over onto Zach's board, I was extremely nervous. I had a driver manager before him by the name of Ev, and I thought Evan was great. And Evan was moving into a new field with Decker Truck Line, and I was extremely nervous to move over to Zach's board. I had spoken with him a few times, and he seemed to me to be a young kid and a fast talker. And over time, I've gotten to know him, and I have figured out why Zach is a fast talker. And that's because he's a fast thinker. He is very knowledgeable with the industry, more so than most people his age. Zach, I could ask him a question and it's it's like he's with me in the truck. He knows exactly what's going on, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and he has a solution. I'm very 
impressed with the knowledge of the industry in which he has. And he's, he's always about the bottom dollar, making a profit. And whatever I need as a driver, he's able to provide most of the time. Everything that's within his power, he provides for it. And I'm able to accomplish it with his assistance. So what does he do on a daily basis? Just about anything and everything I need from him or ask of him, he makes it happen. Great young man. I know one of these days I'm going to lose him and I'm not looking forward to it because I'm going to have to train another dispatcher. And that's that's a phrase I use with him because we're not training dispatchers. It's just the process of getting to know them and what works best and what doesn't work. But I know with Zach's knowledge, he is not going to be in his position long. I think he's on a uh, rocket ship to excel with Decker Truck Line. Now, don't I just make his head say, swell too much, okay? We don't. Yeah, I, I just I can't say I, I can't say enough about him. Great guy. Most most people, you know, they work so they can live, and and other people they live so they can work. Uh, Zach's Zach's a hundred percent all about the job, and he works so he can hunt. <laughs> I will agree with that 100%. I don't know if you heard the podcast we did with him, but yeah, hunting and fishing is his life. Right, right. So what? Uh, so, what's the funniest story you can relay to us? Uh, G-rated, please. Uh, well, we could go PG-13, I guess, uh, that you know about Zach. I don't know if it's actually a funny thing, but I have expressed to Zach that he is no longer allowed to go on vacation. And if he does go on vacation, I need to know the date and the times that he's taking vacation because those will coincide with the dates and the times that I'm taking vacation. <laughs> I, I like to see him joking and laughing now because for the last six months or however long it was planning this wedding, oh man, he could be a basket case. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy I was able to attend the wedding. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful ceremony. And he's got an amazing partner in life. Uh, trying to think of something funny. I guess the, the funniest thing I can think of is just the chaos he just went through with one of his shotguns were breaking down. And he was freaking out on how to go hunting before his wedding. And uh, together we were able to accomplish getting a replacement shotgun. And then the company fixed the shotgun that broke so now he has two shotguns <laughs> well and and you gotta look at it this way what you said is i mean you attended his wedding how many driver managers out there have a relationship with their drivers that they would have them attend their wedding it's it's just not heard of in this industry it's just that's a relationship that you you can't build just anywhere no i i've had uh i've been in the industry now for 25 years and I can only think of one other uh, uh, supervisor I've ever had that actually I went hunting with for 10 years straight. Every elk season, we would go together. And, and that's a relationship that I always cherished. I didn't think I would ever have that again. And to have it now with Zach, uh, yeah, I, I feel bad for the drivers in the future that are not going to be able to work with him hands-on like I get to because I don't, I don't think he'll be in this position long. Very well said. Very well said. Well, thank you, Charles. I appreciate your kind words. And uh, I will go slap Zach in the back of the head really hard for you and just say Charles says nothing but good things. That's outstanding. All right. Thank, thank you, you Charles. We'll talk to you later. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Mm, bye. All right. I have Greg Narcisco here. I did pronounce that correct. Narciso. Narciso? Yeah. Okay, Greg Narciso here with me. And uh, we're talking on this week uh, about DMs and what their DMs, how they work for them, what kind of job they do for them. Um, and Greg's DM is uh, Jerry. God, why can I not remember Jerry's? He's only been here long, uh, damn near as long as me. So <laughs> Jerry Chapman. And uh, you've been with Jerry the entire time you've been here pretty much. And uh, right now you're doing the short haul division uh, out of Fort Dodge here. So what what kind of stuff does Jerry do for you? Uh, he manages the loads. He's got me pre-dispatched 99% of the time. And he always works anything that I need, you know, like uh, time off or if we're going to change your distance there. 
So in the time that you've been with him, um, what kind of attitudes have you guys had together? Have you had any flare-ups, anything like that, or has it always been good times? No, just at the very beginning when we were feeling each other out, you mm-hmm. know, there was a little bit of, uh, well, you know, I want to work, I want to work, you know, and, you know, being short haul, they're trying to get you home most, you know, a couple times a week, and it was like, no, no, I'm, I'm going out for the full week and take Saturday and Sunday off. And then, you know, it's like life changes. So every change that's occurred in my life, you know, just bring it up to him and reorganizes it and makes it makes me happy, you know, try to work with me. What do you like about Jerry and his dispatch style? Uh, he's quiet. He pretty much just gives me the information and lets me go do my thing. You know, he don't worry about what's occurring, you know. If I always get back with him, like, yeah, something's tight on the schedule you know just make sure that he's seen that you know hey i'm not going to be able to leave until four in the morning on my 10 restart so you know i'm not going to make it there by three o'clock in the morning you know i always make sure i verify it make sure he's seen it and you know there's very little communication i mean it's just straightforward you know here's your load i go do what i gotta do to achieve that and if there's any kind of problems in there you know i get with them and then communication style he always you know whatever i'm comfortable with most of the time it's like uh, i want to hear his voice so i'm not sitting there for 40 50 minutes trying to figure out something i could get done in five minutes so you're more of a on the phone type guy than you are on the qualcomm type guy right you know it's it's just faster it's it i get to hear you know his feelings on something so i'm not sitting there trying to go back and forth back and forth with them any funny stories that uh, jerry has ever uh, caught you in no none at all not at all he's pretty straightforward yeah jerry's a pretty straightforward kind of guy uh he was a dispatcher me and him were dispatchers actually together back on uh, god what's up night 2004 to 2005 we were dms together and me and him used to butt heads a little bit once in a while because i got in here before he did so i took the pick choice of the load so (laughs) but that was a fun time so uh truck you got now what are you running uh i'm manual 13 speed is that a 379 or the 389 long nose or do you have one of the well you haven't been here long or have you been here long enough for that not yet not yet anything else you'd like to say about jerry any kind of stories anything like that you know like i said he's he's straightforward and he always works with you you know he doesn't sit there and try to cut you off like your opinion don't matter you know he's always been straightforward you know trying to work with me and anytime life's changed you know, where I'm trying to rearrange my life a little bit, like getting remarried, you know, I want to be home more. You know, that's why I moved up to Fort Dodge. So, you know, once I brought that up to him, you know, it's like, hey, I, I want to try to be home more often, maybe every day or two, three times during a week, you know, where I could spend time with the family. And he's always been making sure that he's try to work with me to try to make me happy and, and try to make a profit for Decker, you know, of course. And it's always worked. I mean, we've had a really good working relationship. And one thing I've always noticed about, like, Jerry, you know, having an ex-driver as a dispatcher always makes it easier transition, you know, because they understand exactly what's going on out there. You know, you bring up an issue, you know, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, you know, having a dispatcher that's been an ex driver's always, to me, makes better dispatchers. So even if they don't have experience, they should go out with the drivers and really get a feel for what's going on out there. So they got to understand when, when we say, hey, man, my life's changing. You know, I'm getting remarried. Can I change my loads? You know, try to get it so I'm more of a short haul than a regional. So in other words, Decker and Jerry have both accommodated what your life changes have gone through. Right. Awesome. Well, that's what I like to hear that we have the freight base also to be able to do that too, because that's very handy also. It, it is. I mean, it's one of the appealing things about Decker to me is, you know, they always try to work with you. You know, it's, it's, you're like a family. You know, you're not just a number or a truck number. People always work with you here. Awesome. Any final thoughts on working for Decker that you'd like to put out there to any of the drivers? Uh, yeah, I, I think things are changing. You know, I think 
Decker's trying to keep up with the drivers and the change in the times. So what what's happening today might not be happening tomorrow. There might be different benefit plans. So just hang in there. You know, that's the whole key. You know, you don't give up on somebody just because something ain't working out. Let's say like the coronavirus and stuff, you know, things are always constantly changing in the industry. And you shouldn't be just jumping from job to job because that grass ain't no greener nowhere else. A family-owned business to me is always a better place to work for than a big company where you're just a number. Well, that truck made a dime. The company's happy with that, you know. It shouldn't be that way. It should be the drivers working with the companies trying to maximize that profit for both of us. Hey, words of advice everybody should live by, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck out there, okay? All right, thank you. Yep. So on the phone now, I have Joseph Parrish, and Joseph is a Tifton dedicated driver now, and he wanted to say something nice about Josh Killingsworth. Go ahead. That's right. um, I've enjoyed working for Josh a a good deal. He uh, cares about his drivers. He uh, helped me many times if I needed extra miles or or had any home time requirements. He's he's always been right there. So has he helped you out with any family issues or anything like that that you've had come up? He has. He has. My father uh, is in an assisted living home now, and when uh, when I had to hit him about needing to, some extra help and getting home, it's, it's just been no problem. Decker in general has been really good working with me on that. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, sorry to hear about your dad and assisted living. I, I know that can be tough. My father was in that for a little while, and it's not easy. So I'm glad we're able to work with you as well as we are. He's doing a lot better now. He's been in for... Uh, December will be a year, so he's, he's doing much better. I think it's going to extend his life by a lot. Well, good, good. I appreciate uh, every kind word you had to say about him, and remember, just keep listening to the podcast, and if you have anything else, any other questions, make sure you get them up to us, okay? All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Joseph. All right. Bye. As always, thank you for listening to Inside the Triangle. Don't forget to subscribe to us on whatever platform you're listening on. That way you will know when the new episodes drop. And remember, submit your questions to podcast at deckermail.com and you could be featured on one of our upcoming episodes. The best way to do this is to create a voice memo on your smartphone, record your question, and email it to podcast at deckermail.com. Once again, thank you for listening. Stay driven to be the best.